Hey everyone, welcome back to KL Tech Videos. Today we're diving headfirst into the world of reverse proxies with an awesome tool called Zoraxi. If you've ever struggled with setting up Nginx or other complex proxies, you're in for a treat. Zoraxi makes managing your web traffic a breeze, no matter what operating system you're using. We're talking dead simple setup, amazing flexibility, and the power to run this on virtually any device you can think of. Whether you're managing a home server or a complex website, or just want a better way to access your services remotely, Zoraxi is about to become your new best friend. In this video, we'll talk through the entire process from installation to getting your first reverse proxy up and running. We'll cover some cool use cases, tips for troubleshooting, and even compare Zoraxi to some other popular options out there. So grab a drink, get comfortable, and let's unlock the power of Zoraxi together. So diving into the GitHub page of uh, Zoraxi, um, it's maintained by a chap called Toby Chua. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and basically, this is the main GitHub page. Now, currently, it's got 2,000 stars. I'm going to start myself because it is a really good project, uh, and we're also going to make sure that we're watching it for participation and mentions. It's gained quite a bit of activity uh, development-wise over the last year. Uh, and if we go to the release page and go to the very bottom on the second page here, you'll see that development started around May 4th, 2023. In that time, it's gained 18 releases. The latest release um, is 305, uh, and that fixed quite a few little bugs there and also added a few features. In the assets, you can see that this thing is on quite a lot of different uh, operating systems, and one of my favorite all time things is that it is available as a Windows binary, which is fantastic because the amount of people out there that are using Windows and feel a lot of comfortable a lot more comfortable with Windows is staggering. You've got a lot of diehard Linux fans out there, but as you know, on this channel, we do try to focus on very simple setups with a you know, very minimal amount of effort required to get things working. Um, I'm, I was actually blown away by this um, tool, uh, this reverse proxy, because I've been using Nginx Proxy Manager for the last two years, probably, and because I run uh, my uh, server on Windows natively and I run Nginx Proxy Manager in a in Docker, in a Docker container on Windows, the networking is just completely messed up, which means any time um, visitors hit my Nginx Proxy Manager, it would never pass through the real IP address. And like many of you out there, I tried from high to low looking for every possible conceivable solution and it never worked and it all comes down to the fact that um, it's just docker on windows and it has its own NAT so but that's why I'm really really pumped that this has a windows binary and we're going to have a quick look into this now so Zoraxia is a general purpose HTTP reverse proxy and forwarding tool now written in Go you can of course have SSL and HTTPS on this as well so some of the features on your simple to use interface, it's got reverse proxy up to HTTP2, you've got your virtual directories, basic authorization, alias host names, custom headers, and a host of other features. One of the best, obviously, is the ACME feature, which means you can get your SSL certificates through a host of different providers um, and have them automatically renew themselves as well. It comes with a cool black and uh, white list um, for countries or IPs built in. And it also has a global area network controller as well. If you want to head down that route, it's got your standard TCP tunneling and proxy uh, function, web SSH terminals, things like that. But essentially, you can look at this as what I would call um, the direct competitor um, to Nginx Proxy Manager, specifically calling that out because they are comparable on that level. They are very easy to deploy both of them, very straightforward. Um, but this one's got a bit more of a modern slick. I know Nginx Proxy Manager's got this version three that's been in the works since the dawn of time. Um, that's taken a while to get together. I think a lot of people are looking for um, a lot of 
issues to be fixed on there as well. So uh, without uh, further ado, let's uh, download the Windows binary. Uh, you could either do it from here uh, or we can just go to the uh, release page, which we're going to do here. So uh, literally, uh, you can just go down here. You can just hit 305 right there on the right hand side. That'll open up here. And then get your flavor. If you're running Linux, grab Linux. If you're you know, running on Windows, we're going to grab the Windows. And we're going to grab the Windows AMD 64. Uh, and we're going to save it in our folder here. But what we're going to do is save it under its own name. So Zoraxi. Because this will be the installation folder. I'm going to save it there. And essentially, all we need to do at this point, as soon as that's done downloading, it's only 101 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. It's just open it up. You're going to get this little prompt because it's not uh, digitally signed and registered with Microsoft in any way, shape or form. But we're going to hit run anyway. It's uh, perfectly safe, by the way, guys. And we can start running. Um, now, we do want to allow it access to the public and private networks because it obviously is going to be our reverse proxy. And we're going to say um, yes to obviously running um, and, and doing that check always recommend when you do install things like reverse proxies um, and you're running your home lab servers run them from the the least um admin level so you know don't put it on an administrator level run it as a standard user something with limited uh system access because should this ever get compromised it just means it limits the possible ways and uh, an extent of any hacks um, so we're going to run this again, but we're going to decline any additional access. So Xeroxy effectively is installed. It was as simple as that. Now, basically, to access Xeroxy, we just need to go to port 8000. So if you are running anything on port 8000, I should have probably mentioned this at the beginning, you're going to want to not um, be using that at the moment. Okay, and it's as simple as that. Localhost 8000, and we can now create our username and password. Make these secure, even if you're about to just... Test this. You never know. You might want to get into it and start using this full time and transfer all your stuff over from uh, your other reverse proxies. But just make sure you've got a really cool um, and secure username and password here. And this is what it looks like. This is the Zoraxi main GUI. Um, and it's very sleek. It's very nice looking. It's just got a clean aesthetic. So the first thing uh, we're going to do now we've completed that installation. Uh, is literally start changing a few things. We're going to start by changing the inbound port to 443, which is our HTTPS port. After that, we're going to hit Use TLS to serve the proxy requests. Underneath that, we're going to hit Advanced Settings and use Force TLS 1.2 or above. And that's all you've really got to do at this point. We're not going to enable HTTP server on port 80 because I don't intend to use anything without HTTPS. And really, neither should you. Even inside uh, your uh, internal networks, it's just better to keep everything nice encrypted. So at this point, one of the first things we're going to want to do is get a domain pointed at this system. So I use DYNU as my domain provider, and we're going to register a new domain. We're going to have KL Tech Videos DYNU.net. Why not? Now, obviously, you are going to need to point your domain at your server, at your computer at home. And to do that, with DYNU, I use the DYNU IP update client, which you can download here. All links will be in the description below. Once you've downloaded it, you will sign in with your DYNU account, username and password, unless you have, of course, set a different one, which you can do in the DDNS uh, settings uh, of the website you've created, if doing that through here. If you're not using this method, then you will obviously have to use whatever method your current DDNS uh, provider allows uh, and is compatible with. And as soon as that's set up, you can move on to the next step. It's an SSL certificate. So we're going to head down to TLS SSL certificates. We're going to scroll down and we're going to hit Let's Encrypt and we're going to put our email address in here. We're going to hit Save and then we're going to open the ACME tool. Now, because I've got the experimental dark mode on in Brave browser right now, you can't quite see the switch, but there is one right here. And we're going to click Enable Certificate Auto Renew. So we've got a nice green logo down here so that everything's going to automatically renew itself when it comes to that time. Now we've got the email address we just registered over there. And now we're going to put in our domain, uh, which is altechvideos.dynu.net but because we're going to have lots and lots of subdomains that we want the same certificate to use we're going to put an asterisk at the beginning here which is like a little star which i press shift and eight for 
uh, and then we're going to click uh, sorry tap dot and what that does is it means that if we want to have something like um, blog at KLTech, you know, blog.kltechvideos or video.kltechvideos or anything, anything you think of, nextcloud.kltechvideos, any subdomain you want, that will now work on here. We're going to use the DNS challenge. We're going to put our provider as DYNU. You put whatever yours is. And then it gives us the option for the API key. It might give you different options depending on your provider. You'll have to obviously go and have a look how to set that up. I'm going to put in the API key we created earlier on on DYNU. And we're going to hit get certificate. And what this is going to do, it's going to, using the API key, put like a little text record on the domain to say this is what we're, you know, this is going to verify our domain. It's going to check that it actually did that and if it does do that it means that that domain is controlled by us so it knows to issue that ssl certificate in all confidence that we are the owner of the domain we are specifying and as you can see our certificate renewed successfully and it's been acquired which is great news because now if we scroll up here uh, and we will see our kl tech videos has 89 days left fantastic now, believe it or not, I did have a few issues with that, but that was all DNS related. So make sure you've got certain things um, open if you have a custom DNS uh, server with lots of lists on it. Some of the things you're going to need to have unblocked are the Let's Encrypt, GTLD servers, DYNU.net, and especially the Google DNSB uh, domain. If you um, don't have a custom DNS and you, everything seems to work fine, don't worry about it. But uh, I did have to unblock all these to get this uh, actually working. Um, but that's just because I've got a lot of lists on there. So that's great. So now we have that in there. So the next thing we need to do is add a proxy, add a target that we want to put on here. So one thing that I do have running uh, on my test environment right now is dockage. Um, and I've got a video for that in the uh, description below. Mentions it in quite a few of my videos now. Uh, if you don't know what dockage is, it's basically an alternative to Portainer. Uh, helps you uh, manage your running Docker containers, compose files, things like that. It's a really good tool. Go and check my video out on that. Um, but let's just pop in here um, a domain for dockage. So we're going to have obviously our primary domain but we're going to have d-o-c-k-g-e in fact i like to call mine stacks because it does save my stacks so if we do stacks.klTechvideos.dynu.net, the ip address will be that of the machine that we're running on right now and the port is going to be 9333 because that's what i have set up um it doesn't require me to use this proxy target requires tls connection because that's only if it has uh its own ssl or self-signed certificates built into that uh you know container which at this time it does not um you've also got the option of advanced settings here now this is where you can set your, your access rules which we'll have a look at in a second you can set it to ignore errors skip uh websocket origin checks allow plain allow authorizations we're not going to need any of that we're just going to go for this we're just going to go for just stacks is the domain i'm creating the subdomain hitting straight off onto this ip address and port create endpoint and then it asks do we need an ssl certificate for this subdomain no we don't because obviously we have our um ssl certificate we created earlier on so if we hit http proxy here you'll see all your domains listed here uh, and we should be all good to go so if we just click on the link here we hit this up and boom we've gone to our dockage instance which is now ready to set up so as you can see at the top here we've got the ssl certificate the connection is secure the certificate is valid great stuff overall um that's pretty much the basics of getting um xeroxy up and running like most reverse proxies but the sheer ease of use the new fresh look um is really really what's going for it here um also a really other cool option you have on here is the access control which you do get in, in other reverse proxies but i find it just so much more simpler to set up in here so um as you can see we've got our um our first proxy here set up on the default access rule right here so if we go over to access control um we can actually set up some blacklists for example 
Uh, if we put, for example, I don't know, uh, Russia, China, I don't know, Norway. Anyway, you know, we just didn't want traffic coming from Albania, Spain, whatever. You could now enable this blacklist, which has just been saved, and any IP address coming from these countries would no longer be able to hit your address, would no longer be able to hit your Dockage instance. And of course, just, you know, while we're on the topic, I'd like to just mention that I would never, ever recommend putting your Dockage instance um, on the internet or exposed like that. Um, this is totally just for demonstration purposes. Um but yeah, you know, the, the access control thing is really, really cool as well. You can even then choose a whitelist version of it. So maybe you only want, um, for example, 192.168.1, um, the domain, uh, so the IP address is on your local LAN to access this. Um, and, that's, and that's basically it. That's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. You've got some statistical analysis down here, so you can see what's actually going on which is really, really cool. You've also got a utilities, a toolbox. So you can actually uh, check out certain things. You've got network tools. You can do discovery, connection, wake on LAN from here, web SSH. You've got obviously your interfaces. It does come with a static uh, web server built in as well, which is a... If you check out your directories, you can see where this is mapped in your Xeroxy folder. You've obviously got your standard redirect functions here as well. Uh, you get a lot of uh, options in terms of that. TCP proxy rules, virtual directories, and obviously your default site and what, what it should or shouldn't show. So, for example, if, if we put in something that we currently don't have proxied here, something like Nextcloud without anything on the end there you're getting um you know this but you can change it you can actually have this to redirect to a new location or you could just have the uh 404 error page instead so you can have it changed to pretty much whatever you want in that regard i uh i hope this has been a good video uh it's just designed to be a quick uh, all-round view of xeroxy just to say loving the project and i definitely think you should go and check it out all links as usual are in the description below Thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one.